This is 5 News Stories. I'm Beowulf Rockland. Top executives at numerous prominent and profitable U.S. corporations have received total compensation exceeding the federal taxes paid by their respective companies in recent years, highlighting concerns over both escalating CEO remuneration and widespread corporate tax avoidance. According to a report released Wednesday by Americans for Tax Fairness and the Institute for Policy Studies, 35 profitable U.S. firms compensated their top executives more than the amount they paid taxes from 2018 to 2022. Among these companies are Ford, Netflix, Next Year Energy, and Tesla, led by CEO Elon Musk, and currently the wealthiest individual in the world. The joint investigation by ATF and IPS also revealed that 64 corporations paid their top five executives more than their federal tax obligations in at least two of the last five years under scrutiny. Despite benefiting from substantial federal subsidies and loans, Tesla, for instance, reported zero federal tax payments during the period analyzed in the newly published study. The electric vehicle manufacturer offset its $4.4 billion in profits generated in the United States between 2018 and 2022 by carrying forward those losses from preceding years, a strategy made feasible by the Trump GOP tax laws reductions in tax rates for affluent individuals and corporations. A report revealed Thursday by the Minnesota Housing Partnership, a housing equity research and advocacy group, indicates half of Minnesota's renters face financial strain due to the cost of rent. Based on 2022 data, the report reveals that two-thirds of senior renters and 80% of low-income renters experience rent burdens, defined as spending more than 30% of their income on rent. Drawing extensively from data spanning 2022 and 2023, Minnesota Housing Partnership's 2024 State of the State's Housing Report offers insights crucial for policymakers. This information will guide deliberations on comprehensive housing policy reforms aimed at potentially mitigating housing costs by streamlining and reducing the expense of housing construction. A man who participated in the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, known for its association with Nazi ideology, was elected as its counselor, its city counselor, in Enid, Oklahoma, last year, leading to a significant divide within the community, as reported by NBC News. Judd Blevins' connections to white nationalists were brought to light by two local residents in early 2023, just before the local elections. Despite these revelations, Blevins was elected several weeks later, though knowledge of his involvement in the violent Charlottesville rally was not widespread throughout the community at the time of the election. However, since taking office, this information has become more widely known, sparking a recall campaign against him by city voters. The recall effort has been bolstered by Blevins' refusal to distance himself from white nationalist groups and his assertion that he has nothing to apologize for when questioned about the campaign against him. Furthermore, opponents of Blevins have stated that they would halt the recall campaign if he publicly announced his previous statements supporting white nationalism, a proposition that he outright rejected. Nevertheless, Blevins maintains a considerable level of support within the community, with one individual at a recent city council meeting commending him for attending the rally in Charlottesville in 2017, which he described as a demonstration to protect American history. The recall election for Blevins is scheduled for April 2nd. The recall election for Blevins is scheduled for April 2nd. More in a moment. On Monday... The Oregon Department of Environmental Quality announced the relaunch of the creation process for a new climate protection program, initially approved three years ago to address the escalating threat of climate change. The program, which mandates fossil fuel companies operating within the state to progressively decrease their greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2035 and 90% by 2050, was nullified by the state's second-highest court in December following a lawsuit regarding disclosures. In December, the Oregon Court of Appeals agreed with attorneys representing Northwest Natural, Avista Corporation, and Cascade Natural Gas Corporation, who claimed that in the process of imposing state regulations to cap and reduce emissions, the commission 
failed to submit required disclosures to the company that hold federal industrial air pollution permits. The department had been required to issue a written statement about why the state was adopting emission limits that exceeded federal rules, that disclose a list of alternatives that were considered and explain why they were not adopted. The court ruled the program invalid on that technicality. Senator Bernie Sanders proposed a bill aimed at instituting a 32-hour work week across the United States without any reduction in pay. The Vermont senator argued that such a measure is imperative to ensure that the working class can reap the rewards of significant productivity increases and advantages in technology. Sanders, who serves as chairman of the Senate Health, Education, and Labor and Pensions Committee, HELP, emphasized the notion of a 32-hour work week is not radical, highlighting the substantial productivity gains that have vastly surpassed wage growth in recent decades. Today, American workers are over 400% more productive than they were in the 1940s, and yet millions of Americans are working longer hours for fewer wages than they were decades ago. That has got to change, said Sanders. Financial gains from the major advancements in artificial intelligence, automation, and new technology must benefit the working class, not just corporate CEOs and wealthy stockholders on Wall Street. That's five news stories. I'm Beowulf Rock.